Drew, good morning. Where are you today? Uh, I'm in Foxborough today. We got uh, this big reunion for the 2001 Super Bowl uh, uh, New England Patriots team this weekend. So I'm up here uh, in Foxborough, and then I'm going to go. I'm going to go spend some time pouring wine for some Harvard Club guys here in a little bit. So I'll be way out of my depth. Being, wow. being a Washington State guy, going to Harvard is a little out of my uh, little out of my league. <laughs> Do you need some big words? McLovin went to Dartmouth, so do you want to help Drew Bledsoe with anything that's uh, Ivy League related, McLovin? Uh, sure. Uh, I didn't get into Harvard. Uh, I'm a little bitter about that, but I went to Dartmouth. Um, I could help you out, Drew. I could come up there. I don't really drink wine, per se. Well, just send me a list of some fancy <laughs> words and, and like an example sentence of how to use them so I can talk good. Okay? Uh, when you look back on 2001, first thing that comes to mind Aside from winning the Super Bowl, is what? Well, I mean, obviously that year uh, there were a couple of things happening uh, that were um, one one big globally and one big just in my life. You know, um, you know, globally it was you know it was nine eleven, and, and um, I spent a lot of time on the um, on the phone, um, you know, with uh, other you know captains around the league and with uh, league officials, and we're, we we were trying to decide whether whether to play or not that, that Sunday after. Uh, uh, after 9/11, and uh, ultimately made the right decision and, and, and didn't play. Um, but uh, you know, it was a really a, a, um, a crazy time, um, you know, in the United States with all that was going on with that. And then, you know, and then on a personal level, the the, the first game back after that um, was when I sustained a pretty serious injury and and uh, uh, you know had to spend some time in the hospital. And and obviously after that, this uh, this young kid out of Michigan, this Brady kid, came in and. <laughs> And the uh, team started playing well. He started playing well. And when I, when I got healthy, um, <laughs> my, my job wasn't there for him anymore. Um, so it was, uh, you know, it was, it was a crazy time uh, globally and also a, a pretty, uh, pretty interesting time in my life. But if you look at your situation, because you did come back and play and throw a touchdown pass against the Steelers in the playoffs to help you guys get to the Super Bowl. And I'm wondering about Tony Romo. If you're the Cowboys and you win again last night, you get home field advantage – can you can you ease him back in just in case you need him? Because you, I think, went how many months? Four months without playing before you got into the AFC title game. Well, you know, it's a little bit different for in, in, you know, in my situation, and I, I think also a little bit different in, in Tony's situation because you know we're not young guys; we've done this before uh, and actually done it quite a bit. Um, and you know, you can stay sharp in practice, uh, slinging the ball around, but it's not going to be you know that situation for me stepping in. Uh, you know, after not playing for a long time, that you know, it, it it didn't feel strange. I was ready to I was ready to go, and I know that that uh, if you know if Tony were called upon, you know, to come in and play for the Cowboys, he'd be he'd be ready to rock and roll. So I, I don't think they need to. You know, it's not like he's a, a, a rookie and they got to get him some reps, so he's ready to play. It's it's a different kind of situation. When did you know that Brady was going to be this kind of Brady? Oh um, man, probably not for a couple of years after, you know, after. Uh, uh, after he first started, you know, I mean, he, he was, he was a kid when he, when he came in, man, we, I, you know, everybody had great affection for him, you know, just kind of a, uh, you know, got an infectious personality and he was over at our house a bunch. And, you know, we took care of him, took him in and, and took good care of him and, and, uh, and still, you know, still cheer for him because he's just has done everything right. You know, he's, he's got tremendous character and, and, uh, um, has done, has done so much right, uh, that it makes it easy to cheer for him, even though, uh, even though ultimately he took my job, but, but I don't think anybody saw him, um, you know, as, as this, uh, you know, uh, one of the all time greats kind of quarterback, you know, for a number of years after that, uh, after that, um, initially happened. But you signed the 10 year extension that same year that you got hurt, right? Is that the timing of that? Yeah. Yeah. That off season going into that season, you know, and, uh, uh, signed a, signed a 10 year extension and, and, uh, you know, as far as I could tell, as far as anybody else, you know, knew, I, I was going to finish my career as a Patriot and we were going to win a bunch of championships. And, uh, um, and, you know, uh, you know, Tommy would have been just a, uh, you know, just a footnote until he got in, <laughs> uh, got into uh, some preseason games and signed with somebody else and, and, and went on to be a starter somewhere. But, uh, but you never know how it's going to go, man. It's a, uh, you know, I, I uh, um, and I, you know, I look back on it, wouldn't, wouldn't change a lot of it. You know, I got to go play in Buffalo, which was, you know, pe- people always ask me when I, you know, Hey, what, you know, what was it like playing in Buffalo? That must've sucked. I'm like, no, actually it was awesome, man. We loved playing there. It was like playing pro ball in a, in a college town with just tremendous fans. And then, uh, got to go play for the Cowboys for a little bit. 
uh, which, you know, you play quarterback for the Cowboys, it's like pitching for the Yankees. People either love you or they hate you. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now it seems like most people are loving uh, on Dak Prescott, but uh, but it certainly is uh, kind of the center of the – the football universe. So I, I don't have a, you know, I don't have a lot of bitterness about it. I, I, I got some great experiences after that, and it was a lot of fun. He's the uh, former NFL quarterback, Drew Bledsoe, joining us. If you had one vote for the Hall of Fame, Belichick or Brady? Uh, yeah, you, yeah, you can't put me on the spot. They're both obviously going to go in the first time they have a chance. So that, that's that's not even a fair question. So I'm not even going to answer it. Yeah, it's a fair question. It's a fun question. <laughs> Come on. Well, you know, so I, I think one thing that, that, that uh, you know, if you, if you wanted to make the case for Bill, you know, you'd look at what he's done when Tom's been hurt. You know, this year Tom was hurt, and, and then Garoppolo got hurt, and the team was still able to go 3-1. and one. So, um, you know, you lose your quarterback, your tight end, your left tackle, and you're still able to win NFL games, which, you know, one thing that I tell people all the time, it's hard to win one game in the NFL. I mean, everybody's really, really good. Even the Browns with all the losses, man, they're close in every game, and, and you know, a lot of games have been a play or two away. It's hard to win one game, and so, um, you know, for uh, you know, for Belichick to uh, continue to win um, year in and year out, um, and even even when Tommy's hurt, you know, he still manages to win games. So, um, you know, he's a pretty remarkable coach. How's the game changed since you played? I'll tell you what, it'd be a lot of fun to play quarterback right now. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, don't get, they, don't get, they don't get to hit them anymore, man. I, I, I remember, so, you know, when, uh, when uh, Cam Newton was, was talking earlier this season about some of the hits that he wanted to go talk to the commissioner about, I was like, man, I got about 150 hits I want to go in and show the commissioner. We got to talk, man. <laughs> they, they, that, was the, uh, that, was, that was kind of the mantra. I mean, you remember Al Davis's mantra, and I won't even try to fake his accent, but it was, it was the, uh, you know, the opposing quarterback, must go down and he must go down hard and uh that's that was that was kind of how they uh how they how they did it back then and that's just what it was and um you know so it's uh it's a good time to be playing quarterback they the uh you know the the, the rules lean in our favor and they don't get to hit us as much anymore um so you know that's the biggest change i do really like the fact that they're that they're making the game safer um you know i remember sitting uh sitting over a over a beer with my brother watching a game one time and we saw one of those hits across the middle and, uh, you know, he looks at me, he goes, you know, they've got to change this or somebody's going to die on the field. You know, the guys are just too big and too fast and, and too strong. And uh, I'm really you know, happy to see that the way that they're enforcing the rules now that are uh, making the game safer and, and ultimately making it, um, you know, a good game for the long term. Because I don't know if it was going to be long term if they didn't change. Uh, before I let you go, uh, how's the wine doing? And where can people buy this? <laughs> Yeah, the, thanks, man. You know, the uh, no, the wine business is going great. We're we're having a ton of fun with it. We're actually, um, um, geez, it's it's crazy. It seems like we just started this thing, and we're almost ten years into the business. Um, but it's going great. If people want to find us, you can go to uh, to doubleback dot com. Um, the doubleback name it's not a football term, of course. It's a, you know, it's a, a, I grew up in Walla Walla in this little town where we're making wine. And uh, and then after I was done playing, I doubled back and went back home. So if people are trying to remember it, that's how you remember it. And uh, we're in the holiday spirit right now. You know, we just love to uh, love to to spread some holiday cheer. And the way we're doing it this year this year is if you go buy go buy six bottles or more, we'll ship it to you at our cost, just because we're um, you know we're feeling uh, feeling like we're in the Christmas spirit. Paulie, order some wine if you can for us. No problem. Yeah. And I just saw where Forbes said uh, Drew Bledsoe's latest touchdown is a killer Cabernet. Look oh, at you. There we go. Yeah, look at you. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Look at you. I love it. Go, go Forbes. Yes. Go Forbes, I love it. Yeah. But you know what's going to happen. Brady's going to come out with a wine, too. So. <laughs> you know, I don't think he even drinks anymore, man. He's, all, he's annoying with yeah, his but, diet. Yeah, but, okay, tell me if this is true, though, Drew. All that stuff, man. There was a time when we used to go have a free few brews and yeah. have some fun. So, uh, you know, maybe he'll come out with some sort of, you know, healthy, vegan, non-alcoholic well, wine or something. Well, Ross Tucker said Brady's one of the great beer chuggers that he's ever been around. Can you confirm that? Oh, yeah. We used to, we used to, go, have, we used to go have some beers, man. We had a good time. There was one time me and, me and, uh, me and, and uh, Tommy and, and uh, Damon Heward and Larry Izzo, we jumped in a bus and drove down uh, in a car down to watch a Yankees playoff game and uh, – <laughs> um, we had a few on the way down and on the way back, which was pretty interesting. If you could mix kale into a beer, then maybe Brady Brady could probably have his own signature beer. Something healthy, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, something else. Kale like ale that. by Tommy yeah, Brady. Kale, oh, gee, you're on to something there. Yeah. DP, that's yeah. Kale ale yeah. by Tom Brady. I love it. Hey, it tastes uh, awful. It tastes <laughs> awful, but it'd be interesting. Have fun this weekend. Always great to talk to you, Drew. Thanks for joining us, bud. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Sorry I couldn't down, come down and uh, play around in the clubhouse with you today, but uh, i got to go do this Harvard thing. I understand that. Be careful there. <laughs> Thank you, Drew. Time. That's Drew Bledsoe. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.